This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so today uh, we are going to learn on Git with GitHub. Okay, it can be GitLab also, Git, Bitbucket also. Uh, most of the tools, which is GitHub and GitLab or Bitbucket, almost same, serving the same features. So in these sessions, we'll use the GitHub, but yeah, uh, other, you know, other tools, it can be used also if you have in your organizations. So yeah, first of all, first question we should ask, what is versioning? So versioning means uh, if you look at the project, okay, uh, we have a development team, uh, engineering team, consist of development and QA. And nowadays DevOps also, we write a lots of code actually every day. And we may write a code in Java or Selenium, or uh, Ansible or Terraform or anything as such. So all this code we write in our projects and as part of the team initiative. So we want to track it and that uh, we want to track it over the period of time, like that who has modified that code, what time this code was modified, why this modification has done, where exactly, exactly the code, code is and when it was done. So all this thing, uh, typically, you know, we want to keep a track of it. Any files which you modify, any source code which you modify. Uh, what was modification done last week, last day, last year, last month, last year, all this thing, who has done it, who, why it has been done. So all the records we want to have it. And for that record, uh, we use the tool, such certain tool, which can help us to do the versioning. So versioning is a basically a process in which you modify the files and uh, you keep a, a record of, uh, the tools keep a record of who, what, why, where, and what, when. Okay, so uh, all the persons who has modified that file, you can have a complete record of it. So some of the histories of versioning tools. So initially we had SSCS, then we got RCS, then we got a CBS, then we got SVM. Now this is the uh, open source uh, versioning tools history. Now, if you see the other side of it, uh, like uh, commercial side of it. So if I remember correctly, we had a VSS, which is from the Microsoft. Then we had a TFS also from Microsoft for force uh, clear case from IBM. Uh, and few more tools were there actually. Uh, so MKS also I have worked uh, in one of my companies, if I remember, Aku, Akure or something like that. So there are so many tools are there uh, in the dominant in the market. So right now we are using Git for it. And again, it's open source. So you can see the evolution of uh, versioning tools. These are the, some of the milestone dates which we have in the history of versioning and from you know sscs to get i'll just skip it because you want to you if you have an interest you can refer the slides offline and go ahead okay these are again history of versioning tools so now coming back to the point and that is git so git is born in 2005 and who has uh, created and he has uh, this uh, tool has been created by Linus Torvalds. Now the question is, do you know who is Linus Torvalds? Anyone of you? Do you know that? I guess he's the developer of Linux. Yeah, so he's the father of Linux also and he's the father of Git also. Okay, so Linus Torvald, uh, was developing a kernel Linux, okay? And at that time, they were using BitKeeper, okay, BitKeeper. Uh, at that time, BitKeeper was uh, serving one functionality and that was distributed capabilities. Distributed, that means teams can work in a distributed environment using BitKeeper. Now, BitKeeper was the giving this software uh, to community, Linux community free of cost. But suddenly they introduced some pricing on top of it. 
So Linus Torvald got angry because of that initiative. Because Linus said, "We are developing software for the world free of cost, and how can you charge to us?" So Bitkeeper did not listen, and then at that time, Linus decided to write Git, and the Git teacher learning right now adopted by entire world right now. I don't think so. Any project which is not using Git actually. So yeah. So it was a replacement for Bitkeeper to manage Linux kernel source code. So Git is popular because of multiple functionality it offers. It is a distributed version control. Now the question is why it is distributed? We need to discuss. It is open source. It's free. It's compatible with all the operating system and faster than in other uh, faster than other SMs other SM tools in some cases 100x also. So why it is faster? The answer is hidden in a distributed version control. Okay. So if you understand the architecture of it, you'll understand why it is faster and why it is called distributed version control. Okay. Uh, explosion in pop popularity. Uh, uh, there's a, you look at the statics of uh, GitHub. Okay. Uh, Git is very popular. So I look at the GitHub repository, which got created in 2009, 2011, and 2020. It's like enormous, right? So huge uh, popularity, but Git has it. So we, that's the reason we are doing training also. Okay, now the question is who can use the Git? So guys, understand that anyone who want to version the source code, you can use the Git. Okay, code means it can be any code style like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, Java, anything. In simple way, if I say it, any files which you can open and read using Notepad, it's a file should be versioned using it. But uh, you should not use the non-text file for the versioning, though you can store it, but versioning will not be done. That means you can't compare two non-text files such as what is a non-text file? So images are movies, music, fonts, word documents, PDF, Excel sheets. These are the non-text file. That means you cannot compare between the two images, but still you can store that file. Okay. So yes, anyone who wants to version the file can use the Git. Now the question is Git is distributed. So how it is distributed? We need to understand. So probably this image, uh, which depict the distribution concept, which is not, you may not find it very clear. So for that, what I'm trying to do, I will go to the notepad and explain you each and everything. Okay. Uh, no, 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 MS Paint. Okay. So guys, are you able to see my screen? All of you? Yeah. Okay. So now why this we call it a git is distributed. So before me talking about the git is distributed. Okay, let me talk about the server and client model. Now server and client model means SVN, Perforce, CVS, ClearCase, you know, TFS, all these things were based on the server and client model. So why I call it server and client model? Let me explain it to you. This is a big server. Okay. And then you install one software. You install one software here. Okay, this is the big server. So I'll just create a little bit of visualization so you'll understand. This is a big server and install the software. Now this software will manage one repository for the discussion. So let me brand it here. So this is font style let's make it a little bit huh? so this is the server and this is the let's say svn and this is the repo so far so good right all of you yeah yeah now this is divided into two part repo one is one is data and one is meta. What is data and meta? So data means in the repo. Now you'll ask what is repo? So repo is uh, basically <clears throat> is a terminology which has been used to create a to uh, to to store the file system. File system. I repeat, file system. 
Now the question is, what is a file system? I hope you remember that, right? I have discussed this one in a mini session such. File system. Repo is a terminology which has been used to store the file system. Version of file system. Uh, so anyone repo? Anyone remember? Uh, in the Docker image, I said file system. Remember? And Linux also, Linux session also, I said yes, file system. Yes, yes, collection of files. Yeah, so file system. So uh, file system means user file system, it can be. Users means your application file system. Uh, root file system, boot file system, all these all file system we discussed. So remember that. So here, repo is basically one terminology we use where we store the file system. So here, data means your files, the code. And meta means, meta means this meta means who modify this code, what modifications, why, where, when, all these are meta. Are you understanding now? All of you? Yes. yes. Hello? Yeah. So now what you know, guys, this is a server okay please look at this this is the server now this server this server if you want to access then we go to the laptop this is a laptop we are creating okay so this is the laptop our workstation we call it workstation okay and then what we do we install the client here so this is the server this is a client and through the client, what we do, we take the code, okay, and then modify here, and then again submit here. So basically, if you see that in this model, there is one server, there is a client. So in the client side, you don't have a repository, but here you have a repository, correct? So repository lies where? In the server. This is called server and client model. Now, let me please hear me out. Uh, if you want to add files, delete files, edit files, you want to see the versions, logs, differentiate between the two versions, branching, tagging, anything which you want to do, you have, you need a network. Correct now? All of you? Yeah. So basically this, all this thing, whatever you do, please, I repeat one more time. You want to add a file, delete file, edit file, branch file, branching, merging, deleting, conflicting, viewing, anything, everything. You want to do it, you need a network. So this, and you require a server. And server have a repo, please remember that. This is very simple and clear stuff. Are you okay with the server and client model now? Can I talk about the distributed? Okay, so in the distributed, what happens, guys, understand that, let's say, let's say, uh, Anshu Paisan Prasanna, okay, so Anshu, this is your laptop, uh, Faisan, this is your laptop, and uh, Prasanna, this is your laptop, and this is my laptop, so this is a poor laptop, and in this, in Git culture, what is happening? you have to create your own repo. Persona also has to create, Faisan also has to create, Rajesh has to create your own repo. So remember that this is a repo. Here, this all repo. So if you if you see that in the, uh, just, okay. So if you see that the culture in the server and client model, we had only one repo, but here, you all have repo. You all have repo. You all have repo. And basically, you are modifying. So here I'm changing the color. This is the client. This is the client. This is the client. This is the client. Get client or whatever it is. And you modify this repo. You modify this repo. You modify this repo. You modify this repo. So see here. In the laptop itself, you have a repo and you have a client. That means uh, if you want to do add, 
edit, delete, branching, merging, or anything as such, you will do against your own. So that means in a Git concept, if you want to work with, everyone has a repo, repo, repo. repo. Are you understanding? All of you? Yeah, uh, yeah, but Rajesh, in this case, uh, there could be possibility of conflicts. Right. No so, one. so who who wins in case uh, someone basically makes changes to the same file? Ha. Huh. So see here, you are modifying the files here, same file. This guy is modifying the same file. This guy is modifying the same files. This guy is modifying the same files. When you sync this four repo, then only the conflict will occur, right? Yeah. So in that case, we have to resolve conflict. Here also, this guy has modified the files, pushed it here. This guy pull it and without pulling, this guy also modify the same file and try to push it here. So you'll have a conflict. So you have to resolve it manually or through algorithms, default, built in. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. So here, uh, in a server and client model, we have only one repo. Everyone connect through the network. <coughs> and then work on it. In the distributed model, everyone have their own repo and they do all activities. All activities are repeated multiple times, adding files, deleting files, modifying files, branching, merging, everything you do in the local and then in your own repository, then share the repo to repo label. That's called distributed. Make sense guys, all of you? Yeah. Oh. So that is the reason now you know that why this is faster and why is it? Because you are working in the local repo actually. Okay. So now we need to understand Git workflow. Okay. So before that, this is the Git workflow. Look at this. So here working with local repos and here working with remote repos okay <clears throat> so first thing what we have to do working with a local repo working with remote repo this is the workflow we'll discuss. I'll show you the demo also. So first thing what we have to do, we have to create a repo. If you remember here, everyone has to work in their own repo, so they need to create a repo. So how do we create a repo? There's one direct command, which we call it git init. Then we add a files into it. How do we do this? Git add and then files and directories. And after that, we commit it. Okay, so this workflow I am going to show you right away. So first of all, install the Git. Now the question is, how do we install the Git? I don't think so. That's a challenge nowadays. But uh, you can go to this place, git-scm.com. Okay, and I'm browsing from the Windows, right? So I'll get a exe msi file. And if you browse for Mac or Linux, you'll get it. By the way, in Linux, uh, let's say if you're Ubuntu users, apt install git. That's a usual command, you know that, and then install it. In RHEL family, like CentOS and all, uh, yum install git, and that's all. So you can install this git client, that's not a problem. So I have installed the git already. If you see that here, git is already installed. You So here, uh, you I have installed the git and git is set in the command line also. See here, this is the command line. And I type git hyphen version after installing it. And here, this is the version which I'm having. But uh, when you install the MSI of Win Windows, there's one more utility you get it, git bash. You see this git bash? You might have seen me using many times git bash for family for SSH so far. 
but you can use for the Git also. So Git bash is a utility which is installed in Windows. And you know what? Here you can run Git bash. See, you can uh, you can run, let's say, cat. So cat is not recognized command in Windows, but uh, Git bash, it accepts the basic Linux command. So you see that here, it is low. So that way you can understand that uh, Git bash, uh, you can use it in Windows. So basic Linux commands, you can use it, find, grab, that more ls pdf and all such so are you understanding this git bash all of you all of you yeah 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 so i'll use a git bash now this format will be different you see here c users rajesh kumar this is my user home and c users rajesh kumar this is also so this look at this uh, little bit of changes in this sign actually okay so you should check this out okay so now this is the i can use the command line which i don't want i can use this one now don't jump and run the command because you are here uh, you are having the lots of files here and you see that so i'll go to the cd drive c drive so this is the c drive i got into that Clear the screen where I am, C type. And here I'll create one directory, mkdir demo uh, git. I'll go inside the git also, and here I'll create one more directory, mrepo1, just for the clean demo. And here I'll go inside the repo1, uh, where I am, here. Now, if you want to see the explorer, here you see that this is empty directory. So now what you have to do, you have to create one repo. How do we create a repo? So git init done. See that in this slice empty git repository in this one. So repo is created. Now this is a hidden file folders will be there. Some of you, we will not be able to see that. So you have to enable this hidden folders and file. So hidden items, you see that it's enabled for me. So that's the reason it's shown. So that's the repo. This is the repo. Okay. So now what you need to do? Workflows. So after that, you have to have add a file. Before adding a file, you need to have a file. Right? So I'm creating file one dot txt and touch file two dot txt. This is the tools file I created. Manually also you can create, you can code for it. This is the code one, this is code two. I'll go and add some text here. This is my code line one and two, three. Three lines of code I have written here. And here I'm writing only one. So here three lines of code, one here one lines of code. So what to do? So you can add all things together. Um, here you can add all things together and then commit, but one by one also. So right now I'm doing one by one. So here, git file add file one. Okay, and you see that here I added. Now I'm going to commit, git commit, and this you have to give the name. So before committing, you know what, guys, you have to set your username and email address for it. Now this is a one-time activity. You don't have to set it up every time. So get config user dot name Rajesh Kumar. This is the pet and email ID. Okay, here Rajesh at the rate of devops pool dot com. Now done. So this is the commands I run it. After that, get commit iPhone M adding first file. And I committed. And after that, I'm seeing the logs. And here you have logs. Okay, so this is the workflows which I have. So you see that uh, try to find out the, all the answers here. So here, who has committed? Rajesh Kumar. What time he has committed? This time. Why he has committed? Here. 
and um, what he he has committed. So show command get show command and this content here. See all these things you have. Did you notice here this one when I committed? All of you. <clears throat> yes, yes. So I inserted three lines to so get tracks at each and every line. Okay, so this is the workflow. This is the workflow which I set. So now this command, whatever I run, I will just store it for you so I can give it to you as part of this. So this is the command I run. So this is a workflow, guys. Every time, <clears throat> every time you want to work with five, add, commit, add, commit, add, commit, add. Understood, all of you? Yeah. Mind it here. <clears throat> Should never forget you are committing to the local repo only. This means from here to here. Local repo. So now next question is how it works actually. How it works. So this is the git workflow. <clears throat> Two commands we have used. <clears throat> Sorry, I have some dashes. So <clears throat> two command we have used git add and commit. Look at this. So how this file has been version, we are looking into it. Did you understand all of you? Did you understand all of you? Yeah, we understand. Yeah, but I'll put it a little bit detailing. So let's create one more image actually. <clears throat> So guys, please look at that image. <clears throat> what happens? This is a what place? This. Okay. This is the repo. Now, guys, this is having two areas. Okay. This is having two areas. What areas? The first area we call it working directory. Working directory. And second area we call it repo. Okay. Repo. So working directory is what? This is working directory. Repo means what? This is repo. Okay. So so far, so good, right? All of you. Okay. All of you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what happens? Look at this image one more time. When we do add, then the file moves from working directly to staging area. So basically, what happens? This is human area. Human works in the working directory. This is a this is the human v and me and we work in the working directory and this is the file this is the lines of code <clears throat> so guys what we do when we add when we add add so is move the file from working directory to staging area but where is the staging area so repo is divided into two areas again okay repo is decided to two areas what is that so one is called one is called staging area or indexing area okay anything you can call and second area 
second area we call it repo area okay so dot git is divided into two areas this one this one is divided to area here you you see that two areas now i don't want to get into too much of it but this place is divided to two area one we call it staging area and one is called repo area so what happens when you add <clears throat> sorry so when you add a file what happens this file travel to staging area and when you do the commit okay <clears throat> when you do the commit commit then this file is getting transfer to repo area so this is the overall transitions you see that so git add and git commit are you able to see that workflow all of you so now you understand this this image here working directly you modify the file then staging area to repository okay so this is the workflow now you'll say rajesh <clears throat> why do we have a staging area why can't we send directly to the repo so you can keep this staging area as a buffer zone before sending to the repo buffer for what for temporary review see so you modify the files and if you commit in the repo this is like a permanent commit okay so here what you can do you can check this whether really do you want to commit those files so for example how do i know which files is in which area so command is called git status see here if you read it carefully this file is in working directory because git has no idea about it and they're saying hey add it then i will start tracking it so if i add git add file to and you see here now it's in staging area why because here it says hey uh, this need to be committed which is here so if you want to unstage it run this command that means you want to send back then run that command. so this is in staging area and now if i commit this is second one so basically you commit all page remember you commit all page what file the file which you have in the staging will you remember that yes all so you always commit the files which is in staging so when i run this command no matter whether you have a too many files in the working directory whatever the files you have in staging will be committed and here you see that get status nothing to commit working tree is clean why that means whatever you file here you had you got it in a staging and then committed so there is no file pending which is here or here to commit so working directory is clean working tree is clean so this is how it is going into that so you can use the command which is called status to see that okay all of you are understanding this all of you yeah so guys here v1 v2 version 3 version 4 all this thing will be stored here so it's only one version of copy here latest probably and modify the file send to staging commit version 5 modify the file send to staging commit version 6 version 7 version 7 8 keep on doing and that is how you take the versioning so this is the git work flow all of you understood now clear any questions any confusion couple of questions sir rajesh the first one is whenever we commit that means that the working directory will be always sync with the latest version of repository right this working directory 
will be always in sync with the latest version of repository no 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 it's a reverse way remember you are here you modify the working direct send to stage uh, adding to staging then commit done so here you have all the version in repository but here you will have only one version in repository what version you can decide it okay i think Got that it. i didn't ask the question correctly so so basically okay. what i am trying to say whatever is in the working directory that will be committed uh, as the latest version in repository right yeah yeah so whatever you modify in the working directory add commit it will be version in the repository so what repository will contain all the history of files you modified in your working directory okay okay <clears throat> in future <clears throat> sorry in future <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> so in future if you want to work on the older version so what you should do let's say <coughs> sorry there is a v5 version 5 okay and you say no 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 i want to work with a older version v2 so check out this and put this v2 now here still you'll have only one working directory okay so see here right now working directory is clean how many files two files version 1 i committed file 1 version 2 i committed file 2 okay so version 2 if i am up to the version 2 two files git log i have two commits one commit two commit now you'll say no i want to get i want to work in the older version so nothing git check out and uh, git check out and then version 1 this is the version 1 here and you see this you check out the older version now you want to go to the latest one check out master branch and you got the latest so this is the place you work on the latest version or the older version add commit add commit add commit understood all of you okay so now i am i want to talk about one thing here did you see this here each commit there is one 40 character value which is getting okay so i just want i want to talk about this one this one we call it a commit id or checksum or hash whatever you want to call it this is a unique actually universal unique id okay this commit id is universal unique id and this is generated by sha1 okay so this is something in a docker if you remember docker image when i commit i used to get it this so same thing actually so in the docker that is been done by sha256 and get it is done by sha1 now what is this so here remember that in git we do not create a version 1 version 2 like that incremental version 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 no it's not like that so in git the algorithm is like this whatever you commit it will create a one object okay whatever you commit it will create a object object is like as uh, and to identify that object you get a 40 character hash value so if you want that object you can commit that you can get that <clears throat> check out that object you can get it there is one more thing i want i want to show you so here let's say this is the repository okay so first commit is a super parent after that second commit third commit so understand that logic is very simple this is a third commit for the parent is this one and for this is the second commit parent of this one is one So now, when you check out the third, you'll get one, two, three. When you check out a two, you get one, two. So this is a parent and child relationship between the each objects. You get it. That's the reason if you see that here, I commit, I check out the latest one, which is a uh, Git logs. See the latest one. 
this is one and two. So I got all this file from one and two. But if you check out the older version, one and git log, you see here, only one log, you have only one file. So again, git check out master to get into the latest. Are you understanding this concept, all of you? All of you? Yes. Okay, so now more or less you have understood what is Git, why Git, how to install Git, how to work with it. Okay, some of the scenarios we shall talk about now, how to commit multiple files. So here file three dot txt, file four dot txt, file five dot txt. So here you see that Right now I have additional files. Now git status. See, these are the work, these are the files in working directory. Git add dot star add it all. And you see that these all are in staging area. Now git commit and third commit. But if I commit uh, this 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 command, if I run it, all the files which is in staging area will be committed. But here I'll do the selective one. So what selective one? So I'll go for uh, file file dot txt and file three dot txt. Okay, so you can do the selective commit also, and only two files gone into this. Still one file is staging here. So I showed you how to commit mass also. You it can be done. Can you commit the directory? So yes, you can commit the directory also. So mkdir src, and here you see that git status. So, SRC directory is not displayed. Why? Because empty directory is is not uh, considered to be a burgeoning, uh, you know, component for Git. So you have to create some files inside it. So here I'm creating some files. Touch, and here Raju .txt and spelling mistake. And here now you see that status. Git started. So what you have to do, same command, git add all. Okay, multiple commands is there, git commit and adding all and done. So now everything is committed, including the files and stuff like that. So whatever you had in the working directory that has been moved to. So this is the way you can, you can work. So will you remember this image all the time while working? Any questions, any confusions? Correct? All of you? Okay, so now guys, here are some of the frequent commands you will use it. So addition, I have talked about it. How do you delete the file? So here, let's say there's a file which you want to delete is file dot file dot txt. So using the git, you can delete rm and file dot txt. Now you should always use the status command. You see that git status, and you see that. Oh, sorry, git status, and you see that file is deleted. File is deleted from the local, but file is not deleted from the repository but it's not a permanent delete understand that i'm deleting the file commit add uh, deleting right deleting a file so here you see that here git log now you see that is screwing so i just want to use it git log hyphen hyphen on a line and you see that as here. look at this the file was here file.txt was here but it got deleted in this commit id Okay, so when you are at here, I'm at here right now, head is master here, you are at here, then I see that file is not there, file, file.txt. But when I check out the older version, the file has to be there because anything you do, there's no permanent delete, it's all versions. Can you see that? File.txt is there. So file checkout and master. And now again, the file is not here. So delete means it's not a permanent delete. You are deleting the tree actually, 
at the latest level. Are you able to understand all of you? All of you? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. So now, next thing is, how do I move a file from one place to another place? So guys, there's a command called move MB. This MB you can use for renaming purpose also, moving for service. So file1.txt, I'm moving to SRC. That's one thing. And uh, uh, what is this? No, it's not has it's not happened. So here file one, I have to specify the path here. Okay. Oh, 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 sorry, my bad. <laughs> file dot mb no, it's a git mb, right? So, huh. so here git mb I did this, and now you see that status. You see here the file got renamed. Mb command is like moving command also renamed. And here, same thing you can do with uh, local also. So here you see get file three dot txt to file three three dot txt. I'm renaming it here. MB command I missed it. See, here. and then get, get status. See. Here. So MB command you can use for the renaming, moving, whatever it is. Git, uh, by the way, if you see that notice properly, this already in the staging area. So when you delete a file or if, when you use the move command, MV command, then automatically they will push the changes to the staging area. And then local changes has been done, you see here. Okay, so now what to do? Nothing, staging area, so you commit here moving and renaming one go. A spelling mistake actually i'm doing a lot of done and git status you see that and that things has done so this is the way you can uh, do that uh, moving and renaming also so guys did you understand all of this flow now any questions, any doubts on this? Uh, Raj, Rajesh, uh, I missed that part of where we can see the hash value of each commit. So can you can you show that command hash, again? Please? Git log. Git log. Oh, okay. And uh, Git log. Okay. And when you use the short one, I use the short one. First seven character also is unique. This is the and, first and seven uh, if you are going to look look for the files which has been committed in this uh, uh, hash values, what was the command? Then get git show. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So the guys, this is the way we work with local repo. So if you want to work with it, this is the way you have to do that. All of you, any questions, any things? Okay, great. So now <clears throat> you see that in the Git, you will see in the Git repository, you will see multiple files and folders. So here you see that uh, there's a config files, which is basically for repo private configurations. Uh, descriptions file will be there. Uh, hooks where you can write uh, git hooks and some scripting and all objects directory where that all the commits is going objects are stored in the objects directory some links are there references which is your head which is your tags and remotes logs index is the indexing the staging and indexing the one which i was talking about that's you know? and like that so yeah objects we discussed about uh, already now, how do we configure a Git? Configuration means uh, you want to modify some of the behavior of Git, which is built in. So how do I modify? So guys, uh, remember that uh, while before committing, I provide the name and email address. So that was a configuring configuration part itself. 
So in the Git, there are three places you can configure. There is one place which is under the Git bottom section. You look at this project level configurations you want to do, which is under the Git config file. This one config file which you might have seen it here. This is the config file. So if you want to configure it, it's the INI format which you can do that. Let me show you here this file. So open up with any editor which you like. See here. So I added my name, remember, and uh, email address. So here you have. Now, this config file is located at the three different places, can be. So if you want to set some variables for the entire Git, for the entire system, then you can use this etc git config. If you want to set some behavior for user specific, then user git config, user home dot git config, and project specific, the one which I did just now here. So if you have a variable set same, let's say name is set at the system level also, user level also, and project level, which one will having highest precedence? So highest precedence will be having repo level, lowest precedence will be having at system level, and then followed by user understand now how do you work with it so i've shown you uh, this command will show you all the system this command will show you all the user and this command will show you all the project level how do you set it up so this is a config hyphen hyphen global this is a global means user level okay and list out this is a command to list out and stuff like that here this all commands to add it multiple options and get out. So you see that here, head. So head is a terminology which is used in the Git a lot. You see that here, Git log. And here you see head is to the master. So head is basically a terminology which is uh, used for the referencing the, the tip commit of that particular branch. Okay, that means I'm working in the master branch and this is my head. Okay, now this is my head in mode three two. Remember the three two. Now let's say if you check out the older branch, older commit ID. So let me do that. So let's say that right now head is this one. Now I'm checking out older one. So my you see here. See here. Head head got at the D3 earlier three two. So head is keep moving and the place where you are. So it's basically tip of the branch where we work. So pointed to pointed to the tip of the current branch in the repository. Last state of the repository, what was last checkout? Last checkout, you know, I check out the last, so whichever it will show you the head. Um, so I'm again going back to the master. Here, yeah, checker master. Okay, so some of the operations which we do, help, git add is done, commit we done, and commit message some of the best practices, and logs we completed. Right. So now guys, I'm going to teach you how to undo in git. How to undo in git means what? Try to understand this. Let's say there's a file here and I want to delete this file. That's the one undo. Let's say there's one file here. You moved to staging. How to move back to working directly? Or third scenario, there's one file here which you created here. You move to staging and from the staging, there's a repository you committed P5, V6, or whatever it is. You can't do undo because it's committed, but you can revert back. So the question is, how do we revert back? Understood the scenario, all of you? So all the time, I was working here, this flow. Now we'll have to work in the reverse flow. Are you understanding? All of you? Yeah. Okay, so let's get it done. So look at my screen here. 
so here get status do we have any file in working directory no let me click on file clean dot txt okay so do we have a file yes we have a file right now it's in working directory okay so how do i get rid of it clean git command clean hyphen f hyphen d force delete see it's gone i have no files in now that's one one scenario is done now how do i uh, you know undo from the staging to working directory so for that let me push the file to staging so touch reset dot txt git add reset where is this file now this file is staging here see so how do i move back to working directory so git reset file name reset dot txt and you see now it's working directory okay and then if you want to get rid i think you know that i cannot i can do okay. now what about this file here we have in the commit and repo and we can't undo the things but you can revert back how do i do that so let's do this so here touch uh, please remember that uh, touch a good dot txt you get add get commit is a good one are you understanding this code good commit one go all of you are you understanding yeah so yes i committed now i'll do the bad commit also ah bad commit see here guys there is one good commit with a good code and there is a bad commit this is a bad commit i have a bad dot txt this is a good commit i have a good dot txt which is a part of it so now this file is a bad and this file is bad and this is where the builds are failing now teams are complaining about it hey build is failing because of your commit can you do one thing can you revert back and uh, so at least the build will be stable and you can take some time to fix it so how do i do the revert back so git revert and here i have reverting this so this revert means i will get the head to this one so this one will be moved to up this will be there but copy will be done referencing will be done so see here they will ask you why you are reverting give some reasons for it and done see here so i reverted this one so basically this one and this one should be same between this one and this one there is a one change you should be having by dot txt correct all of you yeah hello so let's let's see that here get diff compare this one and this one there should be bad dot txt here it is and if i compare the first one with the third one see both the same emoji so this is how you can <coughs> undo the things and get it working so let me store this commands whatever i used so far got it guys all of you yes all of you okay so now we have learned how to work with in the local repository remember this image you do everything in the local repository so now we'll talk about the branching concept later bit of it and well well get going so now the question is how do i see that all the branch so git branch hyphen a there's a but branching type also i'm not talking about just give me some time i'll talk about it. so here all the branches 
you can run this one also okay so i have one branch now the question you may ask uh, just what is a branch why do we need it and stuff like that so this is a not a new questions today this question is there from last 20 30 years since we started using scm tool like cbs sbn and all so when you want to create a branch simple we want to create a branch because of we don't want to destroy the main line of code in our case master is a default branch okay and by the way nowadays at the github the if you are using the latest version of git okay mine is very loud data like this uh, yeah so mine is little outdated but if you are using the latest version of git the default branch is main edge okay just a name change that's all nothing nothing else okay so default branch you are working all the time was master branch itself all the time that means without a branch you cannot work actually simple without having a branch you cannot work so the question is what is a branch so branch is a development i mean branch is a code line of code which you separate it out for certain reasons certain reasons means let's say you don't want to spoil the master branch so i will create one branch out of it let's say feature one branch and i will do all the commits i will do the builds i will if everything is working fine then i'll merge back to the master c12 master branch so you can create a branches for multiple reasons you can create a branches for new features you can create a branches for the new bugs fixing you can create a branches for the different different teams working in a different different geography you can create a branches for patches hot fixes service pack a lot of reasons you can create a branches because of you want to create a branches it's a free of cost in get no charges applied that means when i say no charges applied that means uh, branching in git is not consuming your disk space uh, and it's not a copy operation it's just a link in reference make sense guys at a high level all of you all of you yes so now that now that what i'm going to do so i'm going to create one branch from the master how do i create git branch p1 feature one okay and here you see now you see that there's one asterisk sign next to master branch what is that so remember that there is only one working directory mind it there is only one working directory so and here as per the discussions what we did we created two branches one is a master branches here and one feature branches so you want to you were working by default master branch so far but do you want to work with a few one branch so you have to check out actually so you can check out the commit id also you can check out the branch also so see here git check out p1 so right now whatever the files you are seeing here is from the p1 simple so switch the branch check out master master branch here check out p1 p1 branch here. but basically i don't have a changes anything so you don't see the difference so right now let's work on the p1 branch right now p1 branch touch p1 dot txt git add i'm committing in the uh, in the p1 remember git commit hyphen m p1 dot txt commit it see here p1 dot txt is there now check out this master branch and you see p1 is not there understood now all of you how do we create a branch you create a branch check out and then you work on it and this is how the separating the branches from one another at a higher all of you understood hello yeah yeah yes yeah so this is the branch now we have to merge again guys i'm i'm not complicating there so many merge scenarios are there once you get comfortable okay you will start exploring all these options but right now most frequently used options i'm trying how do merge 
So there are three merges algorithms which we have. Okay, one each. Here I'm talking about uh, which one I should talk about. That's the one one fast forwarding merge. Okay, merging. These are merging techniques which I'm merging algorithm which I'm discussing. And one is three way merge. Sometimes we call it uh, recursive also. Recursive. And there's one cherry picking my I love this. Okay, many other merge scenarios are there. We need to discuss right now only this, which is 80 90 percent of some time. You'll use this one. Okay, so there's a two branch here, C1 branch, which has a few under TXT, and there's a master branch. Check out the master branch, and we have a no fee on the TXT. So uh, the work is completed in the C1 branch. We want to merge back to the master branch. How can we merge it? So this we have to do that. We need to understand this merging scenario. But before that, let me little do summary of this session. So what we did, I discuss about first of all why do we need a merging all together. Then we discuss about the multiple tools. And then Git was one of them. Then we discuss what is a Git, how it works, Git workflows, how to install it. Then, you know, started working on it, created a repo, added a file, and then committed it. Then we explore, explore that options that how it works basically, working directory, staging, repository, add, commit, some of the commands which I use like init, add, commit, log, status, show, you know, so these are the workflow. After that, we wanted to delete the files, RM, move the files, MV, you know, and after that, we wanted to undo the stuff like clean, reset, rework, and stuff like that. And now we are talking with the branch. So any questions so far? Any doubts before me talking about the merging scenario? All of you? No, you guys are asking the biggest question actually. And all of you are understanding, right? Yeah, Rajesh. Okay. So guys, here, let's dis discuss about the, these are the merging scenario. So let's discuss, let me open up one more. So what is the fast forward merge? So understand is very simple though. This is a, uh, this is a, okay. This is the repo. This is the repo. When I say repo means what? Uh, guys, uh, mind it. When I say repo means what repo? Which, which one I am talking about? Tell me. Last one. Always remember. Repo means, now it's become only the place where you have a version. Not working directly, not staging. Please remember this hard code, hard shaping. Okay. So in the repo, you have a multiple commits. So there's one commit, there's another commit, there's another commit, and so on. So now here you have three commits all together. Now from here, and this is the master branch by default. Then you created a new branch actually all together. And this branch is called Fion branch. And then Fion branch you committed. Remember that the parent of this fear branch is this commit. So you committed and you commit few more uh, changes. So far so good, right? All of you? Yeah. So guys here, you know what? See here, this is the three commit here is the additional two commits you got it here. Now, when you merge between this branch to this branch or this branch to this branch, what will happen? Tell me what will happen. Then only I'll show you the data. Tell me, let's say one first thing. Let's say if I want to merge master into the Fion branch, what will happen? If I merge master in the Fion branch, what will happen? Do you have any changes in the master? No. See, Fion branch already have this commit. 
so they say hey there's nothing to merge let me show you nothing to merge so here git master a uh, git checkout f1 branch okay and i'm merging i'm in a f1 branch right now and i'm merging master see here that means in the f1 branch this three commits what you have in master is already there no it's already there got it right because the one you created from the master only correct na and you see the referencing the this one so this is if you merge master to v1 nothing will happen but second scenario if you merge master v1 to master branch then what will happen then these two commits whatever you see these two commits you will get in the master here yeah. understood now yeah yeah so guys this for this this merge scenario we call it fast forwarding merge so now we'll say rajesh how can i differentiate simple please hear me out in the two merge when you merge the two branches and the one branch which you are merging with is coming derived from the parent branch which is here master and if branch has been created and since then there is no additional commit here no additional commits here okay no additional commits and when you merge this your branch to the master branch this is called fast forward is a there is no conflict here they basically they just map this here these two commits here and this become fast forward okay so this is the source branch uh, this is a source branch this is a target branch so again i am repeating when the target branch created from the source branch and source branch has no new commit target branch has additional commit so when you merge the target branch with source branch this scenario is fast forward merge you understood this all of you algorithm which apply for this merge is fast forward merge all of you yeah so guys what i'll do i'll check out the master and merge v1 and read it is it done or not see here. algorithm applied fast forward there was no conflict you were not touched understood all of you yeah yes yeah now next scenario which i talked about is three way merge in the three way merge what happens understand this in the three way merge see here there is a master branch there is a few one branch created <clears throat> since the few one branch created someone is pushing someone is pushing the commit and the master branch also so this is a one this is a two this is three this is four this is five this is six this is seven this is eight so someone is pushing in the master branch also and someone is pushing in the p1 branch also so over the period of time now you see now here scenarios is occur you can if you want this one here in the few branch you can merge or if you want this one here then you can merge both the way you can merge both the way because p1 branch is not having 5 and 6 whereas uh, the master branch is not having 7 and 8 are you understanding this scenario all of you hello yeah yeah so you know what typically you will go for the f1 only so f1 you will merge with this one so 7 and 8 you want here somewhere here so this merge scenario where the source and target 
So this much scenario where the target branch has been created from the source branch and source branch, a target branch also has some additional commit. Source branch also has additional commit since it got created a target branch. When you merge these two branches, the algorithm which is being used is for the branch merging is 3 over merge. That we call it a recursive modules. I hope now you understand that. All of you? Yeah. Okay. So now let me show you this. I'm creating this scenario. Okay. So this is a master branch. Okay. So touch master one dot txt get add all get commit master master one. This is the master one I completed. Oh, sorry. Touch master one get. Uh, have an M is missing. Hmm. So this is master one I completed in the master branch. Now I'll check out this V1 branch. Check out V1 branch. And here I'm creating C3. P3. And here P3. Okay. Committed T4. Two committing. I'm two committing T4. I'll just check out the master branch. And here I'll commit master two, master three. Master two. Master three. Okay, so guys, you now you see that git log hyphen hyphen one line see master one master two master three we have which is not in fee one now check out the fee one and you see here see master is not there but fee one fee three fee fee three fee four is there now this this situation is created right all of you Correct. All of you? Yeah. So this situation is created. And when you merge these two branches, so I'll go to the master branch. I'll merge that way. So check out master branch. And now I'm merging this. Git merge v1. Look at this. They're saying, hey, we got a conflict. Why are you are merging actually? So I gave the reasons. You see that here made merge made by ORT strategy, which is a three way merge algorithm. Unless you understood this, all of you, yeah, yeah, no. okay. Now, cherry picking is what. Cherry picking means picking with chairs. Cherry. Understand that. So here what you are doing, you are having multiple commits here. 9, 10, 11. And you want to pick only one. Only one here. So that's called cherry picking. So let me do that. So bit check out P1 branch. And here. I'm committing in this P1. P5. Remember, P5 I'm doing is the P6. P7. And P8. Last. So here, one line. See here, P five, six, seven, eight. Now you want to pick one of one of these in the master. Which one you want to do? Tell me. Picking only one object right now. Which one you want to do? Seven. Seven. P seven. This is the ID for this. Check out this master. 
And here, remember the fee seven, I don't have that. So you look at the file. So I'm cherry picking it, cherry hyphen pick and seven one, which is here. And I pick this cherry, done, zero, piece of. But you don't, <clears throat> you did not get other one. P6, P8, you see that you did not get it. <clears throat> so guys, this is the third strategy which we have. It's called a cherry picking. All of you understood this? Uh, Rajesh? Yeah. Hello. Actually, yeah. uh, here we are doing the, all the checking check uh, based on the new file only. Suppose I have taken out a out check, I have taken out one file. I mean, in in uh, few branch from the master, there is one file login file, suppose. And there are mm -hmm. double developer who are working in a different, different branch on the same mm -hmm. page. I have taken a check, check out from the master mm -hmm. branch. Okay. Yeah. Now the, I have committed actually, I have changed something in the login page. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, the other one, other developer are also doing the same things actually. He is developing their own uh, things. So we have a, I mean, different different branch and both uh, all the branches having different different commit. Okay. okay. So now, now in that case, uh, now I wanted to merge all the branch to the master. How it will mm -hmm. happen? So same way, process of merging is same. So initially, what I talked about is branching. How to create branch? And how to work with the branch. Next one, how to merge the branches, three strategy I showed you. Now, then in your case, maybe conflict solution you want. Conflict has to be there and how to resolve it, right? Right. Yeah. So merging will be done the same way. If conflict occurs, we need to resolve it. That we need to discuss in some time. Okay. Okay. So now, guys. Last thing, after the branching and merging, we have to resolve the conflict. So here, what I'm doing, I'm creating a conflict. How do I create a conflict? So guys, this you have a p1.txt in the master also. Agree with me? And here, I am going to modify this is code one. This is code two. And this is code three. Three lines of code we have. Okay. So bi p1 dot dot I modify this code and submit it get add and get commit adding code done so I committed in the master now I'll go and check out that branch which is called P. I modify the same files I modify the same files vi p1.txt and now I will have a same code but only line number two will have a subject changes. Different developers modify different code parameter difference. So see, are you understanding what I'm trying to say? I uh, trying to do get commit done. So guys, here p1 you have a certain different change. This is a this is a change which is in a master branch. This is the change in the pure branch. Understood, all of you? All of you? Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you merge these branches, so I'll just check out the master branch. I am doing that. Way. So now, if I merge these branches, then we'll have a conflict. Why? Because same lines modified actually. So Git is not clever to find out whether this line is correct or this line is correct so let me merge this so p1 see here please do this you have a merge conflict Automa automatic merging on this is failed because this this merge conflict cannot re cannot be resolved by cannot be resolved by get and this you have to do manually so what to do now so git status, see here, you have a, this problems, p1.txt. So what to do? 
manually have to move so so vi p1 dot txt you decide where the conflict so you decide okay there's a line number uh, 2 and 2 to 2 this is the problem match and 3 also you have problem maybe spacing problem there is one line here i introduced but here i deleted that line so that is a problem spacing is okay i can work with it and i decided manually i will go with this one 2 2 2 and here here i'll go for the 3 and introduce the one space for something and remove this so this is the manual uh, conflict resolutions you have to do i'm doing using a vi editor but if you do through the some graphical user interface tool like eclipse or source tree which is a ui based tool it will be much easier for you okay i resolve it i said i want one two 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 three three whatever it is save it git add and git commit and conflict resolve and done see here from the conflict now there's no conflict now if you merge one again see now git has learned that you have merged that conflict manually conflict resolved so they are not flagging that issues anymore got it hello all of you okay so now we will get into the new phase of learnings and that too working with so, just one quick question here so in this conflict resolution git basically checks the difference in files or difference in uh, every line of the file so basically git is reading your lines if you remember okay. that when you are committing so, so, sorry uh, in in case there are additional lines it is not going to raise a, raise a flag that there is a conflict no that will resolve automatically oh, okay same lines that required manual interventions else they will resolve they will uh, commit i mean they will merge with the git algorithm okay and uh, those those two files with difference in lines that will be saved as different versions uh yeah i mean it will be considered as a conflict if, if you have a same line modifications and all they'll find no, no, it no. Out. what what i'm trying to say there are additional lines in another file so then both the files will be saved as different versions right yes yes okay 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 <clears throat> so now we have to move on to the next phase of learning so all this was i was doing with local repos my own repos i hope you remember this image i have not deleted this one everything adding deleting modifying branching merging conflict resolutions everything i was doing with local repo but we have to do with remote repo so here working with remote repo and that's where the github will come into the pictures so we have to work so before getting into that stage we have any questions all of you <clears throat> 